behalf of our CEO, Jason Thomas, our CTO, uh, Joel George, and myself, CFO Stephen Johnson, I'd like to thank you for being here today. We are extremely excited to be presenting to you today. And with that, we would like to formally introduce BIOS Neo, a new way to live. BIOS Neo is a vertically integrated remote healthcare platform. It brings together the entire spectrum of healthcare monitoring by connecting doctors to their patients in a more efficient and remote manner. So you may be asking, why is there a need for this? Why BIOS Neo? Well, first, an aging baby boomers population. Now, I don't like the word aging. I prefer seasoned. But that's what they say. So with that, it's estimated that in the coming 40 years, that the population older than 85 is expected to nearly triple in size, while the population older than 65 is expected to nearly double. There's also an increased demand for doctor efficiency. In 2012, it was estimated that nearly 74% of doctor visits were unnecessary. This equates to about a billion in doctor visits that were deemed unnecessary. This fact paired with a seasoned baby boomer population screams the need for more efficiency going forward in the market. There is also extreme lack of preemptive care in the market. This is lose-lose as patients take a reactive approach to their health, which increases hospital costs and expenditures. There's also a need to meet increased regulatory environment. Especially with the patches of the hot passage of the High Tech Act, it requires all healthcare providers to adopt some platform of healthcare information technology in the near future. In a fragmented industry like our industry, there are high transaction costs, and this creates a gap and an opportunity in the market to provide low-cost solutions. And finally, there's been an ideological shift in the reimbursement model in the healthcare industry. It's moved from a volume service-based reimbursement model to a results-oriented model, which in turn has increased the need for preemptive care and efficiency. So exactly how is our product going to address these problems? So the healthcare industry as a whole has been underutilizing technology for a very long time. Our product as a whole will work with the patient, first of all, would take the patient's vitals, um, um, pro take the, the vitals, provide it to a mobile platform, which will then pass it on to our cloud platform, which will analyze the data and store the data for future use. This will also uh, analyze the data and show the doctors when fluctuations in a person's vitals occur. This gives a proactive approach for treating these um, patients. So how would a normal user use our application? So you would log into our system, be allowed to create a daily routine where you would systematically go through the different um, testing that you have. You would be able, our, our platform will be designed that more devices could be added as more tests are needed. So for example, I would like to check my blood pressure. You would be alerted with this uh, easy to use interact, uh, instructions and then you would, um, you would take the readings and wait for the, the mobile device to pair with that and get the data. After that, our data will be sent to our cloud platform where it will be analyzed and used to provide the alerts for the patients. This, this easy to use layout will allow us to provide an easy solution for a very broad consumer group and as well as add value to our group, uh, our customers. Now how exactly does Bios Neo add value to this consumer group? We realize that patients and doctors are oftentimes very disconnected throughout the process of um, patient visits at the clinic. We realize that this vertically integrated platform addresses the current fragmented nature of the industry and allows BiosNeos to um, advocate a cost-effective and effective solution within this industry. We do feel that a vertically integrated product both increases user friendliness and also decreases systematic costs that are associated otherwise with a fragmented industry. Additionally, we're not just a cost-effective alternative to a current regulatory environment we will be the low-cost solution in the market. Additionally, given the reimbursement model shift, our platform complements this shift. More preemptive care paired with efficiency 
increases the optimization of reimbursements for our healthcare providers from their payers. This, these changes that we see in the industry just show, reflect exactly how dynamic the mobile health industry is. Now to understand how BiosNeo operates, it becomes necessary to understand the industry in which BiosNeo operates within. Mobile health, or M-Health, is a quickly growing field within healthcare. As Joel mentioned, healthcare has traditionally been reluctant to adopt technological measures, but it has seen a growing influx of technology within the space. Within the last seven years, there has been a growth of 400% in capital expended within the healthcare industry towards mobile health. Specifically, within mobile health monitoring, which is the field that BiosNeo intends to enter, there, there has been capital deployed um, changes of $3 billion in 2007 to nearly double that amount uh, currently, and is projected to grow 26% compound annually throughout the next few years. However, we do, we do not advocate BiosNeo's entering this entire market. We will focus on a niche market within this group. The, the niche market does include U.S. hospitals and private practitioners within a designated um, service set that really aligns with the product that we offer. And with the High Tech Act, it becomes more necessary for doctors and healthcare institutions to adopt more technology as they move forward, otherwise face reimbursement penalties. And now the business model that BiosNeo advocate or the uh, um, execute is quite different from that of our competitors. Our competitors within the remote health monitoring system really go from B to C, whereas we go from B to B. And our, the business that we interact with are largely um, hospital hospitals and private practitioners who in turn use our service for the end user, the patients. We feel that our, our product really caters towards preemptive care within chronic diseases, which include diabetes, um, hypertension, and a various um, range of cardiological diseases. As the graph indicates, there is a nearly a four-fold increase in diabetes over the next 40 years that this country faces, and BiosNeo really takes a preemptive strategy towards addressing that problem. So the functionality of our software system will be deployed on three systems. A mobile device that will get data from the medical device and pass it to our cloud infrastructure, as well as a cloud structure that will analyze the data and provide alerts to their primary care physicians if, uh, if there is any irregularities. A web browser will be used for the doctor to view patient data as well as alerts prioritized based on severity. severity. This will allow them to easily um, provide preemptive care, um, uh, preemptive care to those patients without um, having to directly interact with them. Our system will incorporate a three-tier software security package in that we will have a full back-end database that is encrypted to ensure that confidentiality of our patients' records are not compromised. The secure transmission between the client and the backend will be also incorporated, as well as a, um, pre pro pro uh, a proactive way to um, mitigate overall vulnerability of the system. We understand that we will follow the, the HIPAA regulations, as well as the FDA um, standards that are provided in pr deploying our overall system. Now, the security systems that Joel mentioned really do add the value to our integrated product. We feel that in a fragmented market, security is often compromised and really does lead to problems when marketing a product. When we market our product, we take several strategies in that include price leadership and a niche focus on a market. Our market focus does include U.S. hospitals and private practitioners, as well as um, taking a more a price leadership function, which Stephen will mention in a second. However, so now to bring attention to a case study that was actually performed here in Dallas, Texas. With a pilot study of 44 patients that used a remote health monitoring system over a period of one year, um, average costs of administering this health care were recorded with a 95% reduction from $13,000 per patient to a little over $1,200. We believe that this is the value that BiosNeo ultimately lends to our, to our, um, our, our consumers and in turn to their patients as well. However, we do feel that this, that, this, that this case study really does target the market population that we're, in, that we're trying to target. Let's get into our target market and our strategy behind that. It's two-prong. First, we're targeting the U.S. hospitals, as Jason mentioned earlier. This is about 62% of the total U.S. hospital population. 
and we're specifically targeting small and very small cat category hospitals. This means that if you're a small hospital, that you have anywhere from 51 to 169 beds. If you're a very small hospital, you have fewer than 50 beds. These healthcare providers that provide a service to these patients are patients that are at high risk for chronic illness, which gives us an opportunity to bring a low-cost solution and a superior quality platform. The second part of our target marketing is the private practitioners group. We're expecting to target 100% of this group, which roughly equates to 131,000 private practitioners covering general care and specific specialty care, including diabetes, physical rehab and medicine, and cardiovascular diseases. Now, when it comes to our sales force, we're going to invest largely in our direct sales force, and we're going to target it by region, starting with our home region, the West, South, Central, and moving to neighboring regions uh, as dictated by the pie chart and the market percentage. And we believe that one of the competitive advantages that Bios Neo has is actually the competitive nature of the industry that we're in right now. The fragmented nature of the industry allows Bios Neo to, to navigate without, without having to worry about the fragmented nature of the industry. Right now, we identify iHealth as our primary competitor. iHealth is a medical device manufacturer that also has a medical device application that allows for communication with its medical devices onto a mobile platform. However, for iHealth to offer the same functionality that BIOS Neo offers, it must pair itself with these range and its suite of apps um, under, under um, Sunbridge. However, since BIOS Neo offers the same functionality without having to have consumers have access to all these different apps, we, we truly believe that the vertically integrated nature of our product allows for our competitive advantage. However, due to the limited the, the limited amount of competitors within the industry, pricing has often been all monopolistic and driven very high. So our pricing model is driven by our low cost solution, which is derived from our price leadership strategy. As you can see, we outperform the competitor by a huge, huge margin. And dis despite the de decrease in our profit margins, we still expect to be positive MPV of north of 700,000 with a corresponding IRR of about 22%. So in looking at our financial outlook, we took a comparable approach, looking at the industry uh, competitors. We found that our net income and our revenue over the next five years will gradually increase with service monitoring revenue driving this increase. Additionally, we expect our expenses to remain relatively flat, driven by an average of 12% R&D over the next five years. And we believe that since our product is actually a software-based product, that R&D will become a large part of our capital expenditures as an early startup company. Due to this, we, we, we have allocated very conservative numbers towards our research and development, which we expect to actually be overestimates of our, of our actual expenditures within development. However, to properly and effectively bring this product to the market, we will also have high marketing expenditures as well. Therefore, we are looking for investors to join Bios Neo with a $100,000 equity stake. We do, we do feel that Bios Neo, with its strong management and advisory board, will be able to guide our investors to a profitable exit as Bios Neo grows within the industry. The management is driven by Stephen Johnson, our CFO, who has audit experience at Deloitte, Joel, Joel George, who has software development experience at Texas Instruments, and myself with a background in investment banking and healthcare valuation at BMG Healthcare in Dallas. However, to complement the, the nature of our management team and to really increase our industry knowledge, we have come, um, assembled an industry advisory board, which includes Dr. Balu Chandra, who has 22 years of experience as a doctor practicing in the field and currently serves as chair of medicine for North Coast Hospital. Um, Naveen Bagh, who is a home health owner and a, um, owner and operator for the last 15 years, and Professor Ken Howard, who is a professor of computer science at SMU and has seen many successful entrances and exits out of the tech industry. Ultimately, however, we feel that Bios Neo is more than just a business plan. It's an executable business strategy and business that has high opportunities for scalability and value proposition for consumers. We now open up the question or the floor for any questions. Sure, absolutely. And so the, the pilot study really just monitored the, this, the same suite of functionality that, that we had listed up there. Uh, so blood pressure, blood glucose, weight, 
um, pulse and uh, oxygen levels within within the patient's normal range. And we, we found that the POS study, what we really aimed to do was decrease decrease readmissions and the unnecessary doctor visits that Stephen mentioned earlier. Um, oftentimes, older patients do see themselves going to the hospital unnecessarily or maybe even having to enact in high high cost procedures due to a lack of proper data transmission between the, the patient and the doctor um, in a timely manner. Sorry, so just just for clarification that your questions will come from the judging panel we got a microphone for you guys sir. Okay so uh, this is sorry this is switching All right, cool. So um, you mentioned, you know, you're, you're clearly taking a, a price leadership strategy. You're targeting small hospitals, focus on chronic condition prevention and management, such as diabetes. Chronic diabetes is the only disease state of epidemic proportion in the United States technically right now. So good, good place to focus the market. Um, your competition, I don't know what the contemporary competition is doing, so I care more about what they're doing in that space, in small hospitals and clinics, around um, chronic uh, uh, preventative care, et cetera. So I'd love to, you guys to comment on, are there any competitors playing in there? Could you just comment on the competition in, in that targeted area? Sure, absolutely. And the competitor that we outlined in our pilot study was actually part of the Christus Health, um, uh, the, the Christus Health Hospital System, which is the, the nation's largest private um, hospital system. And we feel that the competitors really do focus on, on this market due to, uh, and really profit off of that to think, uh, due to its high entry cost um, to even have access to technology. Like Stephen mentioned, the, the cost to just, to just simply have access to this um, to the software is ten thousand dollars and, 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 and beyond um, for our, um, for competitors. We feel that by having a pricing structure that's a lot lower allows us to really navigate through the smaller markets uh, who don't really have the capital necessary to expend on this, this, this more price to comp um, competitive technology that's offered, but really the, the same suite of functionality and, and even more functionality that Bios Neo offers, as as Joel kind of mentioned. Can I ask a quick question on functionality, too? I was interested because you talked about doctors repeatedly, but not the whole healthcare team, physician extenders, you know, et cetera. Is that how this works? The platform does it work with directly just with the physician, or is it with the entire care team? Well, we would, we would right now, how we've been intended to deploy it is if, for example, um, Jason over here experiences a 20% rise in blood glucose, that clearly raises a, a, a flag. So I, I would send, um, the system would alert the doctor, Jason's experienced a 20% uh, increase in blood glucose, should I react or not? So at the doctor's discretion, we would allow them to provide that preemptive um, um, a procedure or a call or a diagnose with that or the computation or communicate with the, with the patient. So we're basically allowing the doctors to have that information to act upon so they can provide the preemptive care rather than waiting for Jason to actually go through something and go to the ER. Kind of just to add on to that, so pretty much it's restricted to whoever we approve as user access. So if you, so let's say I'm a patient and you four of my doctors, all four of you will have access to my medical records no matter where you are. Yeah, that's yeah. what was asking. Yeah, so you get what you do is you get a login, password, and then you get access to only your patients. So we make sure that you can only see the patients that are under you and that have been approved for your service. And you grant nutritionists, EAs, yes. et cetera. Yes, that's all part of the system. So we'll, so I can yeah. We'll have an authenticated user list that will be associated with every patient there to ensure that only the proper individuals are able to access your request. So we will follow the uh, federal regulations in using a, a two-step authentication system where you will have more than a password to enter into our system to ensure that um, the patient's records are viable and right. secure at all stages. Cool. And then just how do you get paid? Okay. Do you want that? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, like Stephen mentioned earlier, the um, 
pay, payment can come from one, one of two ways. Oftentimes we see that, or we, we've seen through our research that hospitals and healthcare um, providers are often reimbursed uh, according to, as, as you mentioned, more of a value and outcome-based model now. And so as we move from a volume-based model in which doctors and hospital systems aren't necessarily willing to take on this extra capital expenditure um, that doesn't really increase their benefit other than a maybe a moral or moral obligation to the patients. Now they're seeing both a monetary uh, benefit through a uh, a results-based compensation, which should be re uh, passed on to payers. And we believe that Medicare, Medicaid, and large um, companies who pay um, healthcare systems should be able to pay, pay the system. And like, like Steve mentioned, th there are three aspects of revenue streams, one being the um, the primary cost with uh, with the with platform. With I'll talk about yeah, so there's the initial installation fee of the platform, right? Which is just a one-time flat fee. And then pretty much what drives our revenues is the monitoring service revenue. And that is based on um, a, it's a monthly fee. Monthly fee? Yeah, a monthly fee uh, that annualizes about $600 a year. And then it's per transaction. So if you take like your blood pressure once a week, that every time you take your blood pressure, you charge a fee. So it's, it's very small, and it's very tailored to the needs of, of the user. So if it's like an older patient who's probably going to do, you know, thousands of transactions a year, you know, we would obviously price it accordingly so it's not outrageous, you know, it's reasonably priced. Um, and we'd adjust based on that population, and we'd charge based on that transaction fee. And then finally, by physically giving the medical devices. So we'll provide the medical devices with the capability, with the secure bandwidth, so that um, outside intruders can't intercept uh, so the, the data. Yeah. The communication between the devices as well as the, uh, the tablet that's provided will be encrypted to ensure that no one across the, door, across the room could intercept that signal and use that information maliciously. So on that last topic, how, how much effort is there required for the hardware integration? Are there hundreds, tens, thousands of oxygen monitors, glucose monitors? Are you, are you talking about from like a timing standpoint? Are you talking about from like a cost standpoint? Or maybe I'm just trying to figure out how far the development is for you guys per device. You have lots of devices to integrate with. So we will have to work with the uh, with these manufacturers to basically create a custom solution for us so that our devices integrate with them and provide that feedback uh, in a secure manner so that you know Bluetooth right now is created on a standard that isn't very secure so we need to work with medical device manufacturers to make sure that a custom solution is created. Now, from a pricing standpoint, however, um, I was going to go back and talk about our competitors. Our competitor charges a, a package fee of $1,000 for a package of four items. And this package includes an Android tablet, a glucose meter, a blood pressure monitor, and, an, and a pulse oximeter. And they charge $1,000 for this. The market value of this package is much closer to $300, uh, the tablet and the three medical devices included. So we see that the, there's a heavy markup on the pricing of this package that really doesn't need to exist because our competitors don't integrate the products. They, they, they basically take the products, package it together, and, and ship it to pay, uh, their, their consumers um, at over 100% margin, uh, which, which we feel is an area that we could exploit quite easily, even with a higher cost product that has our Bosnio uh, software on it. I have one last question. Um, you're going after two totally different markets with the hospitals and then also the private practice physicians. Can you talk a little bit about how you intend to market to each group and kind of the difference between and how you're going to manage the difference between marketing? Can you, can you maybe expand on how you think the different or where so, you're So like if you go to a hospital, you might have to deal with the overall practice group there. So there's a hospital administrator and there's several different groups within the hospital that all have to agree to adopt the technology and do this versus an individual physician's practice. Right, right, and their right. cost structures are different. Right, right, right. So how do you anticipate getting to these physicians and getting this idea that they should have this out to them? Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, I think, so we're selling to the entire hospital. So when we target a hospital, we're selling to the entire hospital, um, which basically means our system can be integrated across all groups. So we target from that standpoint um, where we can tailor our, I guess, target market to the entire group as a whole. 
then when it comes to private practitioners, it's the same idea, right? Um, each practice will have their own system um, that they can that they can use. I, I, I guess I'm. Did I really answer your question? I guess I'm kind of confused. Okay. I think that's something that to focus on is really how are you going to address this market from you know, just making the physicians aware and making the hospitals aware because oh, they're totally okay, okay, different okay. in the way that they do, do business. So you're talking about Maybe. actually selling the product? Yes, to the, actually how getting it out there. Are you going to go through a distributor to get it out there? Are you going to have doctor okay, dinners? Got it, got it. How are you going to address that and, and what? how much is that going to cost? Do you do it in 50000 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably going to cost a lot more than that to get this out on the scale okay, okay. you're talking about. I understand now. So um, right now, we're assuming a direct sales force. So we're just going to invest in a large uh, sales team, and we're going to allocate accordingly based on region and based on target market, and then directly sell to the hospital, directly sell to the hospitals and to the private practitioner. Thank you, guys.